This demonstration covers the configuration and performance of block-based backups for Microsoft Hyper-V using Networker 9. In this demonstration, we're going to be configuring block-based backup of our Hyper-V server, and the VMs on it. We've already gone ahead and installed the Networker client package, which is this binary right here, the LGTO client. We have also already installed the Networker module for Microsoft client, that's the NWVSS package here. So we've just done a, a standard installation of those, and that's it. If we look at, at our Hyper-V server, we've got a single Hyper-V server. We've got two VMs on it. They're both up and running. So everything here is configured. We have all the packages installed, and we're ready to configure. But before we move to the Networker server, we're going to come to a command prompt, and we're going to type our backup commands, our NSR NMMSV.exe, and we're going to do a dash capital P. Just to do a query and make sure that all of our writers are working, that we can see everything, that all our save sets are propagated correctly. So we run that and we can see we had exited with success. And we can see here are our save sets. We can see both VMs and all of the associated information. So from this point, we're ready to go to the networker server and go ahead and configure backups. So we'll close that. We'll go to our networker server. We're going to start out on the protection tab. We need to create a client for this server before we can back it up. So we'll enter the new client wizard. We're going to type hyperv.brs.lan, which is the name of our server. We're going to click next. And we want to choose Hyper-V server for backup. Here we're going to specify options. You'll notice that as with Exchange, block-based backups is checked by default along with client direct. Obviously we need client direct if we're going to do block-based backups and this is the only way we back these up so block-based is both of these are going to be grayed out and you cannot change them. So we'll click next. Here we're going to list the save sets that we can back up. We're going to go ahead and leave everything checked. Again click next. Now we have the option to specify some settings. We can, if we're using federated, we can specify options here for usernames and passwords and then how we want that done. We could do perform partial writer backups, force VSS copy, and if we had proxies set up, we could specify the proxy servers listed here. In this case, it's a standalone Hyper-V server, so we're just going to click Next. Validate the options we've selected and click Create. That successfully completed, so we can click Finish. You'll see we have our client created now. The next thing is going to be to create a policy. So if we right-click Policies and select New, we'll call this Hyper-V and choose OK. Now we're going to go into our workflow and create a new workflow. So our workflow, we can call it something like Hyper-V Backup. And we're going to go down here. We did not create a group, so we're going to create a group within the workflow dialog. So we'll click the plus sign, it's going to bring it up. It's going to pre-populate it with a default name, which is fine. We'll leave that default name, and we're going to choose our client, and we're going to choose OK. So now we've created our workflow, we've created a group for it, and associated our client with it. The next thing we want to do is add our backup actions. So we'll click Add. We're going to leave the default settings here. It's going to be a backup, backup subtype is traditional. We're not going to modify the schedule in this case in a production environment, obviously you would. We'll leave it set as full on Sunday. And we're going to click next. In the settings field here, we can specify our network or server or a storage node that we want to back up to and our destination pool. Our destination pool, we want to be on-site DD, so we'll change that. And since they're on-site backups, we're going to maintain them for a week. And we'll hit next. We're not going to make any changes here. This is where you would set any advanced options. We don't need to change anything. We don't need to specify any overrides. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And here again, we can just validate what we've set. We'll click Configure. And that's it. So we have our policy created. We've added our client. We've added a group. We have assigned an action to that workflow. And now when we click OK, so at this point, we can go to the Monitoring tab and start our Hyper-V policy. So we'll right-click Start. And we can expand this out while it's running just to get an idea of its progress. This is going to take a little while to run, so we will suspend the recording and come back when it's complete. 
All right, so we can see that our backup is complete. We have the Hyper-V policy has completed. We've got green check marks. So now what we want to do is go ahead and recover that data that we've backed up. If we go back to our Hyper-V server, let's shut down our dash two VM here. Okay, we'll see that that's off. Now what we want to do is start our networker user for Microsoft. The first time it comes up, it's going to prompt us with this um, plugin settings. This is going to be a Hyper-V server, so we can actually deactivate everything else if we want to. Or we can leave it all in there. It doesn't matter. It just cleans things up a little bit. So we'll say that, and now we're going to see the default is Hyper-V. So what we want to do is we want to select Recover, Hyper-V Session, and we're going to do an image recovery. We're going to choose our win2k8-2vm, so that's the one we want to recover. We're going to go to Advanced Recover, and we're going to make sure that Override is selected, so we just want to restore this right to its original location, Overwrite the, um, the existing one, which is selected, and we're going to choose Finish, and now select Start. This recovery is going to start. It's going to take a little while. It's a large VM, so we'll pause the recording while this is running. We can monitor it in the monitoring tab, and we'll come back when the recovery has completed. Okay, we could see here that our recovery has completed successfully. We could see the status here as succeeded, and our Hyper-V recovery is complete. And now if we come back into our Hyper-V manager, we can go ahead and start that virtual machine, and it's running. So we have successfully configured block-based backups for our Hyper-V environment and performed a recovery. This demonstration covered the configuration and performance of block-based backups for Microsoft Hyper-V using Networker 9.